Jody and I dragged our aching feet on the hallway after the whole day searching every corner of this mall. Oh, my legs are toast. I don't think I can walk further than this. Who makes an ad without specifying an official store? I can't believe we've walked to 10 stores and we can't find her. Let's try this last store. If she isn't here, then we get an Uber and go home. We walked into the store holding the last string of hope. And there she was, sitting majestic on the shelf. We ran up to the shelf and Jody, being Jody, started to cry. She's so beautiful. We finally found her, the baby Stella doll collection. We quickly brought Stella to the cashier, then walked out of the store like world champions holding a trophy, knowing everyone was staring at us like we were crazy, as if we care. Hi, I'm Leah, and here's my bestie Jody. I've known her all my life. We've grown up together in the same neighborhood. As long as Jody and I are together, nothing matters whatever shenanigans we were up to. Today, we just got the perfect doll to complete our doll collection. That was all that mattered. It's not easy to find someone sharing our weird hobbies, right? Jody is the queen bay of everything, and she has always pushed me to be a better version of myself. Like when she became the swim team captain and always encouraged me to join the team, and it turned out that I actually loved swimming. The next day, we came to the pool to see Dee, our team member, doing a perfect backstroke. Good job, Dee. Then he gathered us and announced the upcoming synchronized swimming competition. And naturally, Jody secured one position, and the other was also up to her. Sir, that's easy. It's Lee. I know you two are joined at the hip, but it needs more than that. With all due respect, sir, believe me, Lee is perfect for this position. It's a synchronized duet. Who else can you trust to be in sync with me other than my best friend? I was happy that Jody had so much confidence in me, but also anxious. I've never been in any nationals before, but it's a great opportunity, and I never took it for granted. I'm going to try my best to prove my worth. So, instead of joining Jody's family on a skiing trip, I stayed behind to practice in the town's swimming pool in the summer. One day while resting, I suddenly felt water splash on me. Then I saw the most beautiful boy on earth. He was coming out of the pool, and it felt like the sun was radiating on his skin. I watched him climb up the lifeguard ladder and put on a name tag that read Evan. Okay, it seemed like I got my future husband's name. <laughs> and now it's time to show what his wife was capable of. Then I showed off my best moves, but he barely looked at me. So I knew just what I needed to do. Help! Help! I'm drowning! Right at that moment, Evan dashed into the pool and rescued me like a brave knight. You saved me! Wow, you're so strong! And you are so pretty. And then he winked at me. Ho ho ho! I guess I drowned again in those eyes. From that day, I started going to the pool every day. Evan always waved at me, but that was all. He never made a move to come near me again. I couldn't fake drowning every day at the pool, so I settled for the friendly waves. Finally, Jody was back from the holiday. So tell me everything about the mystery lifeguard. Uh, he was so gorgeous, but I'm not sure about him. He hasn't asked for my number yet. You should have walked up that ladder and said, Hey, mister, do you like me or not? Because time is running out. <laughs> That's definitely what you would do. Exactly. Like yesterday, I was at the mall with my mom and I saw a boy, Mark, at the ice cream stand. He was dropped at gorgeous. I walked straight up to him, took his phone, put my number in it, and told him to call me. And he did that night. Whoa. Would that work with Evan? Only one way to find out. The next day, I mustered my courage and marched straight up to Evan. Hi, um, Lee, right? Yes, how are you doing? Good. Hey, let's go up the lifeguard's chair. There's shade there. He offered his hand to help me go up there. Actually, I wanted to talk to you sooner, but it's kind of super busy here the past few days. You know. Oh, that's it. I sat next to Evan as he paid close attention to everything happening in the pool. We talked, we laughed, and I even felt his fingers brush over mine. Talking with him was so fun that I forgot the mission today. Ask his number. It's all right. We had loads of time for this. But all that went away when I got to the pool the next day, and he wasn't there for the days after. There was still no sign of him. He came and went just like a fever dream, leaving me aching in a quick fever of first love. Well, his loss. He had all summer to ask you out, and he didn't. Good riddance. Yeah, but I should have just asked him out like you suggested. Come on, forget about him. Now, let's focus on an important issue. My birthday. As always, it's going to be the biggest event before school resumes. And you know what? Mark's going to be my escort. Ooh, dreamy Mark is coming. Can't wait to meet him. Just like Jody described, her parents spared no expense. Her party was packed with all friends at school and some of her social circles that I've never seen before. But in the middle of them was, for a second, it felt like I was dreaming, like I'd spent the entire summer dreaming of this face. Evan was here in flesh and blood. I was about to confront him, then, you came! Lee, meet Mark. Mark, it's Lee, my bestie. What? My head was spinning. So Evan was also the Mark-eyed Jody had been talking about the whole summer? 
How could it be? When Jody spared herself to other guests, I dragged him to the corner. Evan, what are you doing here after disappearing all this time? And Mark? What's with the name? Um, actually, my name is Mark. The pool was too cheap to make a new name tag for me, so they made me wear an old one for a former employer. And I just took the lifeguard job in the summer. Things just got a little hectic, so I forgot to tell you. I never planned to hurt a beautiful girl like you. What? No! You don't get to flirt with me anymore! Besties like the same guy. How could it be more typical of dramas? No, sisters first. Jody was with him, so I'd better stay away. That's right, there's no other way. With the decision having been made, I tried to hold my aching heart to sleep. Until the next day at school. I was grabbing things from my locker when someone startled me. Hey, Lee, it's great to see you again. Evan? Mark? Why are you here? I go here now. Now I could swim in your beautiful eyes every day. See you around, gorgeous. That's not good. Lee? What's going on? Why was Mark looking at you like that? Oh, screw. She saw that? <sighs> That's it. It's better that she heard it from me and not from someone else. I took her to a quiet spot and explained everything to her. The look on her face was not reassuring. So, are you saying that Mark is Evan? The lifeguard? Then let's go to the pool to check. I already told you he doesn't work there anymore. We can ask Mark directly instead. Excuse me? Asking him? Sorry, I'm not like you to ask this kind of question. What does that mean? I just see you're making excuses to steal my boyfriend. Stop being Delulu. What? Talking about Delulu, Mark is not your boyfriend yet. Let's see who can win him. Challenge accepted, bestie. I couldn't believe in my ears. Jody had been thinking of me like that all this time? I came to school the next day to see Jody and her other friends marching in the hall. Mark, let this smile always on your face, cause when you smile, the whole world stops and stares for a while. Hmm, classic Jody, but flashy things don't shine. Then I approached them and fake being fainted to fall into Mark's embrace, and his gallant caught me before knowing what happened. Oh, you saved me again. How can I pay you back, my love? <laughs> I could see the fire burning in Jody's eyes. At lunch, I went to the canteen with Mark. I could feel the distance of the time wore away, but it's nice to talk to Mark slash Evan again. But Jody, out of nowhere, sat down beside him. Hi, Mark. And Lee? Watch out your food, Mark. Do you know one time she was so hungry that she stole her date's food while he was in the restroom? So, do you know, Judy used to devour the whole turkey on Thanksgiving? <gasps> she just peed into the pool last week! You know that? Hey, it's just an accident. And you, you bought your mom's Gucci bag and blamed it on your brother. <gasps> Not as interesting as you still needing your mom to sing a lullaby every night. Jeez, I wish American presidential elections could be as hot as girl fights. <laughs> Too frustrated, I blurted out every secret we kept together since we were kids, until teachers stopped us. We had to clean every single corner of the pool as punishment. Let me help you, Jody. Thank you, bestie. Yeah, bestie my butt. And just like that, the Third World War continued. The whole school started whistling about the famous friend duo of the school turning to bark at each other. Huh, go ask your queen bee first. One day, Mark came to find me, and we were talking for a while. I'm sorry. I think I need to be held accountable for what is happening between you and Jody. No, it's not your fault. Just some girl stuff, you know? Then from nowhere, Jody stormed in. It's you! You tore up my swimming presentation draft to the coach, right? What gibberish are you talking about? The draft was just right there on this table, but when you came, it disappeared. We found this near your locker. What was it? It's a piece of paper from Jody's draft? I'd never seen it before, let alone tore it. I saw with my own eyes. Don't you dare try to deny it. But I'm with Mark all this time. I can't do this. I just came, so I'm not sure. Y you you enough with your lies. You'll no longer be accepted in our team. Get out! What? You can't. Don't forget I'm your partner in the upcoming competition. Of course I can. I'm the team captain, and Dee will be my partner. Everything was happening so fast. My head was spinning. What's going on? I've never done such things. But Mark? Why didn't Mark defend me when he knew I was innocent? Was everything worth fighting for that guy? Now I felt like I lost everything. My best friend, my swimming spot. When it's already bad, Mom knocked my room with the most terrible news. Hey, what's going on with you and Jody? Nothing. Nothing? So why is she burning your dolls? What? I looked through the window to see her burning our collection. I immediately ran to her house. Jody, no, please! She didn't. She let it all burn. That was it. Our friendship was burnt to ashes like our dolls. A few days later, Jody and Mark became official. 
Thanksgiving came, but I felt lonelier than ever. Not because Mark chose Jody, but her dying friendship. So I came to the swimming pool in town. While letting myself float on the water, I heard a very familiar voice. Lee, is that you? Oh my god, I hoped I would bump into you here. Don't even speak to me, you devil. Did I do something wrong to you? I know I- You ask? You forgot what you've done to me a few days ago? But- But I was in Switzerland until yesterday. Turns out, he went to a military school in Switzerland and only returned home on holidays. And Mark was actually Evan's twin. So I'd been fooled all this time? The news hit me with the utmost shock. All the suppressed emotions were blurted out with the tears. Evan pulled me in his embrace and listened to every word. I'm sorry my brother must have been messing with you. I'll handle this, I promise. A few days later, Evan asked me to go to the cafe near school to talk about the truth he learnt. We stepped inside to see Jody sitting here with her new boyfriend and new best friend. I was about to leave, but Evan pulled me back. Trust me, will you? Then he held my hands and walked me towards them. Upon seeing Evan, Jody couldn't hide her shock. Huh? You look like my boyfriend! Yes, I'm his twin brother. Right, D? You know her, too? She is our sister. Well, half-sister. We have different last names. Then Evan told everything. But you know what was new? And here is your presentation, Jody. It's my sister who hid it, not Lee. I gave you the chance to come clean, but you refused it. I'm disappointed, Dee. But why blaming me? Because it's always been you. Jody will always choose you just because you're her best friend. How fair is it? I'm also a good swimmer, you know. So at Jody's birthday party, she overheard Mark talking with me. That's when an idea came to her. She asked Mark to help her cause a rift between me and Jody, so that she would replace me to become Jody's partner in the swimming competition. So you ruined our friendship for this? Then Jody ran out of the cafeteria. It felt good that I'd been vindicated, but it hurt that breaking our friendship was so easy. The next few days were not getting any better. Jody was calling nonstop to apologize, but I wasn't ready to listen to her. One day I heard Jody and Mark talking. I apologized for everything. My sister wanted a spot on the team, so I just want to help. But I thought by doing that that I could know what your feelings are if there's someone else like me, because, because from the beginning I already fall for you. I don't know what is real or not real anymore, Mark, but I can't forgive you. At least now. I'm sorry, but whatever happened between us is over. Things were messed up for Jody as well. The next day, I answered the door to see Evan, Mark, and Dee there. We apologize for what happened. We didn't think clear before doing that. I let jealousy take over me. I'm sorry for things going bad between you and Jody. It's no use being mad this time, at least. Everything was settled in some ways. I am really sorry about my messy family. Please, I heard enough sorry these days. So how about that? I should have done this long ago. Do you want to get ice cream together sometime? I thought you'd never ask. And, Lee, I have decided to leave the team. I can't be there after all of this. But how about Jody? I ran to the school gym, knowing the chaos that was going already. Look at this mess you girls have made. How are you supposed to join the competition without a partner? I'm sorry. I- When the coach left, she jumped into the water and let it take over her. So I joined her. Hey, I can be your partner. Lee? No, I don't deserve it. I was stupid. I burnt our dolls and I threw away our friendship. Yeah, you were pretty stupid. And you hurt me. But it's okay. I'm here because you need me. And regardless of anything, I'm always going to be there when you need me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. We both learned the lessons of being calm before saying anything regretful. And now, let's win this thing. Yes, with you, bestie, I can always win. Hi, I'm Addison. But all my friends call me Addie. I'm just an ordinary girl who doesn't have any particular talents. But there is one thing I do have. That is... Oh, why don't we just watch the video to see what it is? This is my older sister, Olivia. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's also an amazing singer and has a talent for art. She can pretty much draw anything. I mean, I don't know how my parents could have such a perfect daughter like her then have me. But I'm fine with that. Olivia was all about winning trophies and medals. Well, I was happy with the ice cream and ton of snacks my parents gave me for getting a B on my math exam. Hey, Addie, my baby. Guess who's got some new trendy clothes? Oh, Mom. Dad. I don't like these things. Why are you buying so much? It's such a waste of money. However, Mom's desperate look made me cave so I reluctantly grabbed a random item and went to try it on. Oh, it's a crop top. I stared at myself in the mirror. Okay, so my parents' dumbfounded expressions made their feelings pretty clear. 
I looked ridiculous. See, I told you already. I'm way too short to wear tops like this. Right at that moment, Olivia walked by. I immediately ran over to her. I think you should have this top. It'll bring out your nice figure. You'll look so cute in it. Mom shook her head. No, if Olivia wears this, everyone will see her navel. Um, isn't that the point of crop tops? Then Dad chimed in. Anyway, Liv, where are you off to in such a hurry? It's not that nonsense model club again, is it? Speaking of clubs, is the school dance club still recruiting? You should join. You'll get in for sure. My sister rolled her eyes, then left, slamming the door behind her. I loved my sister, but she just seems to find me annoying. She was like the ice queen, always shutting me out. She never allows me to borrow her clothes or to touch her stuff. And if I ever try to go into her room, she freaks out. It's not that she's mean as such, but she tends to act like I don't even exist. <sighs> it's okay. I mean, I'm kind of used to it. I live my own life and she lives hers. So that's why when I got my first cell phone and started to use social networks, I didn't try to search for her profiles, though I knew she was on all those platforms. That evening, my mom asked me to go upstairs to call Olivia for dinner. No answer. So I began pushing the door open. She suddenly appeared from the bathroom and yelled, Hey, what are you doing? You know you're not allowed in my room. I knocked, but you didn't answer. Mom says it's dinner time. She hissed at me and shooed me away. Ugh. Why did she have to treat me like I was some pest? The way she was so weird about her room was annoying. Hmm, maybe she was hiding something in there? Nah, probably I was just overthinking this. Olivia was always like this. Life went on, and my sister, well, she continued to distance herself from me. But then one weekend, I walked downstairs to find her cheerfully humming a song as she danced around the kitchen. When she saw me, she smiled and said, Morning, sis. Come sit here. I made you breakfast. Okay. This was weird. I cautiously sat down and kept looking at her. Um, why are you so happy? And where are mom and dad? Mom and dad just rushed off on some work thing. Then she put the plate in front of me, grinned, then continued. Mom made cookies this morning and told you to take them to Grandma's. Tell her I said hi. Oh, you're not coming with me? No, no can do. Sorry, I've got work to do. She continued to look at me and I got the feeling she wanted me to hurry up. Before I'd even finished my toast, she passed me my jacket and bundled me out of the door. Having no choice, I made my way to Granny's while in deep thoughts about how odd this was. Until... I realized that I didn't even have the cookie bag with me. I'd left it at home. Gosh, I immediately rushed back. But, hmm, why was there a strange car parked outside my house? I lingered back and watched as a middle-aged man got out of the car. Before he even got to the door, Olivia opened it and smiled at him. I dove behind a bush so I could carry on watching. Huh? Why was he handing her flowers and a gift box? She happily took them from him and even leaned into his ear and said something. Oh my god. So this explains my sister's strange behavior. They're a couple, aren't they? I never thought that my sister would be interested in an old man like this. Shocking. But wait, what if... What if he's deceiving her? as Olivia may look sharp, but she's actually very innocent. If that was the case, I would beat him black and blue. But this was just my speculation. I can't hastily act without knowing the truth. So I decided not to let them know that I was there, and quietly entered the house through the back door to get the cookie bag. Later that day when I arrived home, my sister was back to her ice queen self. She was cooking in silence, so I told her grandma said hi, and she just grunted and carried on stirring her soup. Hmm, I needed to find out what was actually going on. 
the perfect opportunity arose a few weeks later, when mom and dad went away on a weekend trip. I told Olivia I was meeting some friends for a picnic, but this was a lie. I actually hid in my faithful hiding spot and watched. As expected, the old man showed up and Olivia let him inside. The door was ajar, so I tiptoed inside and heard them laughing in the living room. I peeked in, and to my astonishment, my sister was sitting on the couch wearing the weirdest outfit ever. It was those kinds of clothes that only catwalk models wear, and most of all, she had this heavy makeup on and looked like a totally different person. The strange man was sitting next to her. Both of them were looking at her phone and laughing happily. Oh gosh, now everything was clear. From her reserved nature to her seem-to-be-secret room, it was all so she could continue to hide this age difference love story. I didn't know how to react now. I just kind of felt bad for her because she had to hide it. I mean, this was her home. And we were her family. We might not have been close, but she was my big sister and I wanted her to be happy. If this love was real, then I fully supported her. And if this guy turned out to be bad, well, then I'd protect her till the end. My parents returned that evening, so I set up a family movie night. A great idea for family bonding, right? I chose a romantic movie in which the main actress is much younger than her boyfriend. In the middle of the movie, I turned to my parents and asked, Mom, Dad... If you were their parents, would you allow that relationship? They gave me confused looks. Then dad immediately asked, Hey, Addie, don't tell us that you're in love with an old man, huh? This startled me, but before I could say anything, the doorbell rang. I was about to go open the door, just to avoid answering dad's question, but Olivia was faster. Not long after that, she turned back and shouted at me, Addie? How dare you touch my phone? What's up, Liv? Who's at the door? Go ask your dear daughter, Addison. She gave me a dirty look, then stormed up to her room. My parents immediately bombarded me with loads of questions. What's happening here? Who was the one ringing the bell? Why that manner of Olivia? Okay, the one who rang the bell was Olivia's boyfriend. So, earlier, when Olivia left her phone in the kitchen... I noticed that there was a message from a man named Henry Davis. I immediately searched for him on Facebook and found out that this was the same guy who'd been visiting her. So, I used her phone to text him, telling him to come around at 8pm. I thought it would be better if Olivia could make her relationship public with our parents. But, Hayes, it seems she didn't take it very well. Anyway, now I had no choice but to tell my parents everything. Their faces dropped. And without saying anything, they ran upstairs and banged on Olivia's door. But there was no reply. Instead, all of us heard a rattling sound from the back door, and Olivia had fled. Our parents' faces turned red, while I felt so guilty as I not only wasn't able to help her, but only worsened the situation. The next day, Olivia still hadn't returned. She also didn't show up for school which caused my parents to freak out. Then I suddenly thought of Henry. Right, why didn't I think of asking him from the beginning? So I immediately contacted Henry and asked him to help find Olivia. That afternoon, when I just got home from school, I saw Henry driving off. There was a note stuck to the door saying Olivia was fine with an address below. And it also said if we come there at 9 a.m., we'll see Olivia. The next morning, we showed up earlier than scheduled. Huh? It was a studio. And just like Henry said, Olivia was there. She looked so glamorous and was so busy prepping for a photo shoot that she didn't seem to notice us. Henry welcomed us and started explaining everything that made my parents, as well as me, speechless. Turns out, the truth was far from what I thought. He was not her boyfriend. Instead, He's her manager. He saw Olivia's potential and guided her to become a photo model and a TikToker. The flowers and gifts were from the brand she was working with. And the other day, she wore that outfit and makeup for a TikTok video. After the shoot was over, we walked over to her. But she took one look at us and ran away. 
I managed to catch up with her, then said, Sis, why didn't you just tell us the truth? We're your family. We'll always be on your side. On my side? Really? You have no idea what it's like to be an outsider. It doesn't matter how many competitions I win. I'm invisible, while you get praised for just getting an okay grade on a math test. I want to be a model, but they don't want that for me. They want me to be miserable. I'd rather leave that house to do what I love. I was dumbfounded, and so were mom and dad, who by this point had caught up with us and heard everything she'd just said. Dad hugged Olivia. Then in an emotional voice said, Olivia, it's not that we forbid you from doing what you want. We were just worried for you. We just know that this industry can be complicated, and we don't want you to get hurt. That's right. And it's not true that we love Addie more than you. You just excel at everything, and we just didn't want Addie to feel insecure. We're really sorry, Olivia. We all love you. Oh, no, Mom. Don't worry. I never felt that way. Actually, I've always admired Olivia, and it made me sad when she ignored me. Olivia burst out crying, and our whole family hugged each other tightly. Sorry to interrupt, but you must have had some idea about Olivia being an internet star already, right? I mean, it's easy to tell from her social networks. I shyly said, I... I don't follow any of her accounts. I thought she just wanted me out of her way. Henry then patted my head and showed us Olivia's social media accounts. And wow, she had millions of views and followers. We all watched some of her TikTok videos together, and she totally rocked it. Seeing how much this meant to her, my parents came round to the idea of her being a model, and they even thanked Henry for helping her. Then Olivia came closer to me. Hey, Addie, I'm sorry for being so cold in the past. Turns out, you love me so much and will support me regardless. At least now, if I really fall in love with an old man, I don't have to worry, right? Then everyone laughed. Oh, even though my plan didn't, well, go exactly as intended, I still call it a success, because it all ended out great in the end. You thought it was all finished, huh? Nope, not yet. There's one more thing I want to show you guys. That night, for the first time, Olivia let me go inside her room. Wow, it was like a mini studio with expensive flashlights, a ring light, and a camera. And her clothes and makeup collection were super impressive. Oh, do you remember what I said at the beginning of the video about being an ordinary girl? Well, that hasn't changed. But now I can confidently say that there is one thing I do have. And that's an awesome big sister who loves me unconditionally. Hey there, animated story show viewers. I'm Crystal, a model and influencer, and I'm here for the Trend Like This Influencer Awards. Why don't you come on in and get ready with me? I know what you're thinking. I have a unique look. You see, I have vitiligo, a condition that causes pale patches to develop on my skin. It's definitely different, but I don't really see it as a disadvantage, but rather one of my biggest perks in life. Since I was a kid, people have always gawped at me in the street. But luckily, my mom and big sis have always been there to support me. Honey, they're only looking at you that way because you're beautifully different. Yeah, Crystal, never doubt yourself. You're one of a kind. Thanks to them, I've grown to adore the way I look. Then one time, while we were walking in the park, this eccentric-looking man approached me. Oh my word, your skin! It's a masterpiece! Turns out, he was Bo Ivanov, the world-renowned photographer. He begged me to model for him, and with the encouragement of my mom and sis, I agreed, and my photos became a viral hit. That's when my interest in modeling sparked. I joined this awesome modeling agent and got to learn all poses for photo shoots, wear these gorgeous outfits, and best of all, have makeup done to complement my vitiligo, not to hide it. Ever since then, I've worked my butt off, fully committed to my work. That's how I became the face of multiple fashion brands and built up my influence empire. I wanted to pave the way for people like me to love themselves and celebrate our own uniqueness. Because look at me, my career, my life could come to this point today, all thanks to my skin. And I wouldn't change it for the world. But then this morning came, I woke up to see, yeah, my vitiligo patches, they were gone. This can't be happening. I still have tons of fashion shows and events booked for the rest of the year. Without my patches, will they all cancel on me? 
panicked, I called my manager, Alex, and she immediately rushed into my apartment. This shouldn't have happened. The project with Red Rush is next week. I know that. What can I do? Go see a dermatologist? No, Crystal. You can't breathe a word about this to anyone. You don't want to ruin your career, do you? Well, no, but I can't hide inside forever. No, you can't. But you can fake your patches. Just use makeup. Draw some on. What? You mean I should lie to everyone? Your choice. It's either that or kiss goodbye to your career. This is wrong, I know, but I've worked so hard for this. I couldn't just give up now. I guess the foundation would have to make do. I went back to my daily modeling life, and luckily no one seemed to suspect anything. But I was so on edge and constantly checking my makeup. Crystal, have you heard? The brand Raris is looking for models with unconventional features for its newest fashion collection. You're the perfect fit! OMG! Everyone who's anyone in fashion knew of the Raris' creator, Mr. Finnegan. If I become his muse, that's my step into high fashion world! I can't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity! I got my focus straight, fearlessly walking into the building, when suddenly my heel got stuck. I tumbled backward, and out of nowhere, these strong arms wrapped around me, and I landed straight into their warm embrace. For a moment there, I could feel their divine scent overpowering me. Hmm, you're sauvage, isn't it? You don't change much, do you? Still clumsy, even though you're now a superstar. Hold up. This voice, it's Sam, my high school ride or die. My, my, puberty has hit him hard, huh? Samuel knelt down and gently put the heel back on my foot. Yep, my heart was definitely flipping out of my chest. You're going in for the casting, right? Oh, um, yes, but how do you know? I'm one of the judges. I gotta go now. Break a leg, uh, but not literally. Wow, Samuel's made a name for himself already. Impressive. Wait, Crystal, you're here for work. And now time to shine. I strutted my way along the catwalk, doing my signature twist-turn pose at the end of it. As expected, all the judges were mesmerized. This job was in the bag. Just then, everyone went ooh and aw at the girl next in line. It's Amanda! She's known as the super rookie, who challenges the modeling world's standards. Ironically, that title once belonged to me, but that's how this industry works. You can easily be dismissed if not careful. We got the results right after the casting. As expected, I was in for the show. Hooray! Hey, Crystal, right? Amanda, huge fan of yours. Say, can a pro like you give this rookie any advice while we train together? You do know this is a competition, right? That means no help. Then I shimmied off. Day one of the training, and I already messed up. I had to disguise myself to sneak out and buy a new one. Crisis averted, but this did make me 30 minutes late. You're the professional. Act like one so us amateur can look up to. A veteran in modeling. Or so they say. Those chicks wouldn't miss the chance to dethrone me. Especially her. Welcome, everyone. May I introduce you to our fall 2023 haute couture collection. It is inspired by the elegant art of ballet. So besides your usual training, you'll have a chance to learn some of the moves to capture its true essence. Then I'll pick my star, my vedette. Ballet? I hadn't done that since the accident. Little six-year-old me was having a ballet performance and had to do this crazy spinning technique. But somehow, I ended up twirling like a humming top, then face-planted right on the stage. I never forget the audience's mocking waves of laughter. No, get yourself together, Crystal. Whatever the challenge is, I'll succeed and rock the vedette position. The first lesson was catwalk. Easy peasy, no one came close to matching me. Good posture, excellent posing. Well done, Crystal. Aw, he's so sweet. Can we just take a break to admire this piece of art? Come on, why are you so shy today, Crystal? Your patches are superb. <laughs> Except they're just the magic of makeup. But the nightmare had only just begun. Jeez, these clothes were way too tight. They got me melting like the witch from The Wizard of Oz. Gotta go touch up. Then during another session, I couldn't keep my balance and was wobblier than a jellyfish. Meanwhile, Amanda effortlessly executed all those moves. A few days later, Mr. Finnegan organized a photo shoot, which we had to pose like a ballerina on this revolving platform. The past trauma immediately rushed back into my head. I stepped onto the platform shaking like a leaf. Only with Samuel holding my hands could I imagine to do the simplest pose. At least it's over now. My, my, our pro seems a little rusty, doesn't she? Just step back and let one of us younger girls take care of this. Right, Amanda? Go practice, Xena. Amanda stepped up to the platform. Her body started moving like a real swan. Gorgeous, Amanda. You're as graceful as the ballerina in the musical box. That's it. I think we got the shot. Well done. 
The whole set erupted in applause, and Amanda was the center of attention. Looks like you could learn a thing or two from your junior. Look, I may not be the best ballerina out there, but I'll show them where 1,000% efforts get me in life. So I stayed later after the training to practice more, starting with stretching. Ouch, not as easy as it looked. Okay, let's try again. Just have to raise my leg and... Whoa, whoa! Okay, this time it has to work. And now the hardest part, sur le point. Uh-oh. Just then, Samuel appeared, trying to catch me, but we both ended up stumbling on the floor. Don't try too hard. You may hurt yourself. It's just, the vedette means a lot to me. I know you can do it. You've been such a positive influence, and I know that energy can get you what you want. No, my patches! I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to- It's okay, I crossed the line. I'll just leave now. Don't, please. If you only knew the truth, you wouldn't think so highly of me. Hey, what's wrong? You can talk to me, you know. Just then, the lights brightened around us. What are you two doing here at this hour? Samuel looked startled and immediately kept his distance from me. Nothing. I saw Crystal practicing. Thought I could give her some advice. That's not fair. I need some too. What do you think of my releve? They started laughing together like a married couple. Since when did they get so close? After a few days of intense practice, I may not be a ballet master yet, but I did feel more confident about facing the final challenge, which decided who would be the vedette. Look at this gorgeous couture design! I would make a perfect black swan. I tried the dress on, but accidentally smudged the foundation and got it all over the dress! Oh no! I immediately rushed to the bathroom trying to wash the stain off. Stupid foundation! Super stay my butt! The door suddenly snapped open and in stepped, Amanda! You, your vitiligo patches? They're coming off? And what are you doing with the dress? I tried to hide it, but she already snatched it away from me. Is it foundation stain? Did you fake your vitiligo? No, no, I was diagnosed with vitiligo for real, I, I swear. I told her the truth, thought she was going to use it against me, but to my surprise, she looked heartbroken. I decided to pursue modeling because I felt inspired by you, but now you're telling me it's all a scam? How could you? Amanda, wait, please. I, I thought you were against me. Does it matter anymore? Now that I got a taste of the truth, you don't deserve my respect. I was at an utter loss for words. I'd been so wrapped up in fear of losing my career that I couldn't care less how my action could affect those who looked up to me. I'm nothing more than a hypocrite. I couldn't live like this anymore. Vitiligo or not, I had to stay true to who I am. I walked straight up to the judges' panel and wiped all my foundation away right in front of them. Mr. Finnegan, I no longer fit in your collection. The truth is, my vitiligo has gone. I no longer have any unconventional features. Thus, I'm here to announce that I will cut myself from the show. I'm deeply sorry for all the trouble I caused. I turned to walk out the door, but there stood Samuel. Crystal, I don't understand. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm not the person you think I am. I ran home, hid under the blanket, and cried myself to sleep. Suddenly, a call from my manager woke me up. How can you sleep at this hour? The press is going wild. They're calling you an attention-seeking fraud. I immediately came to my senses and looked up the news. Oh no, how could it break out so fast? At this speed, I'd be cancelled by tomorrow morning. See what happens when you act out of my order? Gosh, you models are so dumb. Don't go anywhere. I'll be there to handle this. Was she being for real? All of this was her idea in the first place. Enough! Have fun dealing with this on your own, Alex. I shut down my phone, packed my stuff, and left it all behind to go to my secret place. I used to spend time here with my family when I was a kid. Being surrounded by nature calms me down. Suddenly a hand pressed on my shoulder. Hey, we've been looking for you. Samuel? And Amanda? Did you guys follow me here? It's the only way we could find you. I'm sorry for going at you like that. I was so shocked. You don't have to. It's all my fault. I lost myself when my vitiligo went away. I acted out of fear and ended up disappointing everyone who's counting on me. <sighs> well, it's hard to stay sane when your identity is taken from you. But what's important is you've learned your lesson. Now, where is the fearless, confident crystal we all love? She's right. Patches or not, you're always special to us. That means a lot to me. Thanks, you guys. Turns out, I'd misunderstood Amanda this whole time. She's brilliant, gorgeous, and caring. And perfect for Samuel. Welp, that stings. Suppose it's time I got back to work for some damage control. I opened the phone to see hundreds of notifications. Among them was a message from Mr. Finnegan, saying he has a place for me at the fashion show. So it's not the end for me, right? Go get it, girl.
Yes, it felt so good to be back. Crystal, you're here. I have great news. You'll be the vedette for this collection. Me? But I don't have any unconventional features. Doesn't matter. You're perfect the way you are. Two girls will stand by your side, and you'll be in the center wearing this work of art. An elegant swan among the flock of ugly ducks. Isn't that a bit offensive? So this was your plan all along? Playing dirty tricks to save your flopped career? Cut it, Xena. Mocking me won't change the situation. There's something fishy going on here, and I'm gonna get to the end of it. Finally, the show has come. As soon as I got the signal, I strutted to the runway confidently, turning heads to my every step. But it's not for the reason you're thinking. I actually switched places with Amanda, and now all the spotlights are on her. Right at that moment, Mr. Finnegan bolted to the runway. What do you think you're doing? You ruined my show. I had a deal with her. I... What deal? Tell me. Right now. I... It's her who's behind this. Alex? Ugh, that snake! It turned out Alex bribed Mr. Finnegan to let me be the vedette and drag the models with unconventional features down since I'm no longer one of them. Hearing that, all the models turned furious, ready to jump at the two frauds. You two have crossed the line. I don't need any of your manipulative games to continue my career. I will stay true to myself no matter what. Unconventional features or not, I'm always willing to speak up for them because everyone is beautiful in their own way and they deserve a chance to showcase their beauty to the world. The audience erupted in cheers and applause while Mr. Finnegan and Alex were surrounded by cameras and criticism. Justice served. After all that drama, I'm still modeling but with a different agency that fully accepts me for the real me. I continued to influence young people on self-love and being uniquely themselves. Amanda and I became the best of friends. We also made tons of plans to collaborate with Samuel. But honestly, I couldn't shake off this heart-wrenching feeling whenever these two were together. Luckily, my hectic schedule has left me no time to think about that. Guess what? After days and nights of hard work, I now have my own line of skincare products called Only You. Exciting, right? Oh, Sam, you made it. Wow, they're beautiful. Amanda will love them. Uh, no, they're not for Amanda. They're for you. Crystal, I... I'm crazy about you. I always have been. What? It's me you like all along? Then why didn't you tell me that before, silly? I leaped into his arms, and we shared the most amazing kiss. Perfect ending for an amazing journey, huh? It was the final match. My team, the Bulldogs, were neck on neck with our opponent, the Knights. Declan passed me the ball and I sprinted towards the goal, outrunning all the chasing Knights players. Suddenly, this guy cut me off and tackled me to the ground. I managed to break free, lunging towards the goal, and scored a triumphant touchdown. My teammates and I were celebrating when I saw the player who tackled me, Cody, talking to the ref and pointing at me. Suddenly, the ref blew his whistle. She's a girl. I could tell when I tackled her. She's a girl. So what? Why is a girl on a boys football team playing as a dude? She's not even registered properly. But she's the best player who scored more points than anybody on the Knights team, alone, and the winning goal. Despite Declan and my teammates standing up for me, the ref announced it was an unfair score and gave the win to the Knights. Hey, it's okay, Riley. We had a good game and a good season because you're here. Right, guys? Yeah, I'm okay, guys. That player, Cody, you, sir, have made an enemy for life. Hi, I'm Riley, a tomboy through and through. I prefer getting down and dirty on the football field rather than fussing over makeup and boys. Ironically, Nola, the girliest girl you know, is my best friend since childhood and also the only girlfriend I hang out with. But even then, sometimes Nola's feminine energy got out of control. Like today, when she's crying over some boy she was in a complicated relationship with. We've been together for a while when I saw him seeing another girl today. Yeah, things happen. I swear we locked eyes and he totally ignored me. What a jerk. Riley, you have to help me get back at him. What? No, I don't want to get mixed up in all this toxic drama. You should ask someone else. This guy is so charming that any other girl I'll ask will fall in love with him. But you, Riley, are the only one who would be immune to Cody's charm. Wait, Cody? Cody Nelson? The footballer? Yeah, I told you about him before. Shoot. I should have listened to Nola's boy dramas before. But whatever. Right. What Cody did to you is absolutely outrageous. We gotta teach him a lesson. And for you, Nola, I got your back. Okay, the plan is to ruin his image in front of other girls and make him fall in love with you all at the same time. And then we'll dump him right away, breaking his little heart. But we need to give you a makeover as he only has eyes for girly girls. Nola then called Halsey, a makeup artist from the school over. Yeah, we definitely can seduce a guy with this. I bet lots of girls are falling for you instead.
Nola and Halsey then dragged me into a clothing store. The minute I saw racks lined with dresses, my first instinct was to run. I had to try on dozens of dresses, and Halsey trained me to walk like a lady. They even talked about a curtsy? Who curtsies anymore? Then Halsey taught me how to slow dance, which I quickly mastered. But they didn't seem impressed. Halsey suddenly grabbed my waist and took the lead. I was following her steps when, OMG, they look so cute! Eek! Only girls understand each other. What? Do we look like a couple to them? Stay cool, Riley. This is just for revenge. Nola's plan better be worth it. The next day, I brought my princess makeover to school, ready for Cody, when, Hey, you look familiar. Have I met you before? Oh, shoot. It's him. Did he recognize me from the match? I know. Must have seen you in my dreams. Phew. False alarm. Cody then asked for my number, and we started going out. During the dates, I was so nervous without Halsey and Nola. Okay, Riley, act proper. You're not in your natural habitat. Gosh, you look like an actual princess. Another time, my mouth watered at the burger on the menu, but despite starving, I tried to keep calm and had to order a salad instead. Aw, only a salad? You eat like a little birdie. (sighs) It's exhausting to be a girl. But after all the dates with me, Cody hasn't announced anything official between us. Is it his natural instinct to be flirting with girls? Ugh, Nola's plan's obviously not working. I gotta take matters into my own hands. So I secretly poured some estrogen powder into Cody's protein shake and texted Nola to come see the show. (laughs) Ha, look at the way he dunks the ball. Let's see if he could still be Prince Charming now. Later, he clashed with another player, fell to the ground rolling and whimpering in pain like a baby. I was satisfied for today. Suddenly, I saw Declan walking over, and he sat right next to me. Oh no, my buddy can't see me in this embarrassing look. Just then, a basketball came hurtling towards me when Declan's quick reflexes got me behind him and caught the ball with his free hand. Are you all right? Yeah, thanks to this. Friend, here. (laughs) Say, what is a pretty girl like you doing in a sports event like this? Thanks for saving my girlfriend. I can handle it from here. Thank God you're okay, Riley. Aw, he's so sweet, so soft and cute. What? Would you stop saying he's soft and cute? He's not that kind of man. You're right. He's a manly man. We're so sorry, Cody. We didn't mean anything by it. Wow, I didn't know such a little girl like you had such a big voice. I'm so happy to have you by my side. Hey, Riley, would you come to the fundraiser carnival with me? I'll make an announcement to everyone there. Wait, was this guy serious? When I got home that night, I saw Declan waiting outside on the porch. I looked at him and then down at my outfit and back to him in panic. So that really was you back there. So you really did recognize me. Why didn't you say anything back there? You looked so nervous and acted like you didn't know me, so I didn't want to embarrass you. Anyway, when did you start going out with Cody? Why change so much for him? I explained everything to Declan, the whole revenge plot for Noah and how I'm doing this to get back at Cody for taking away our championship. Well, the Bulldogs were in the wrong for letting you play in the first place. It was a men's final. I don't care. He has to pay for it. Then I stormed inside. I gotta stand my ground. But Nola was there already sitting on my bed. I heard the whole thing. Makes sense now why you were suddenly interested in the plan. Anyway, whatever you're in it for, your main goal is to ruin Cody's reputation. Don't get sidetracked. Okay, guess I have to attend the carnival with Cody then. On the day of the carnival, I saw Cody waiting for me at the entrance. But I couldn't show up looking like this without Halsey. She was dancing her heart out at Coachella, all the way in California. Suddenly, Cody and I locked eyes. I frantically looked for my nearest exit, but Cody was coming quick. Suddenly, I felt an arm wrap around my waist and turn me around. It was Declan? I saw Cody give up and walk away. Other girls were trying to approach him, but he just declined them. Was he still looking for me? Maybe he's not the bad guy Nola painted for me. See, he doesn't deserve the whole revenge plot against him. Yeah, I didn't expect that. He seems to like you a lot, and you should just stop this and be yourself. Declan and I shared a brief moment of silence. Under the sunset glow, Declan looks so charming. Has he always looked like this? You suddenly notice how handsome I am. I mean, yeah, you could be quite a catch. How come no one's tried to sweep you off your feet yet? Maybe they have, but none of them have ever been interesting enough. Besides, I already have eyes for someone else. Huh? Um, I, uh, I need to grab a bite. I'm starving. Bye. Declan's just a buddy I've known for ages. Why was my stomach doing a cartwheel just then? Ah! Oh, it's just you. Mission success. Huh? I just saw Cody post you as his official girlfriend. Nola was right. Cody posted his official announcement about us. 
Now all you have to do is dump him in public. Nola, I have to tell you something. This has gone on for too long. I'm sick of being someone I'm not. And I don't think Cody's that bad of a guy. He totally is. You're not falling for him, are you? Don't disappoint me, Riley. And the next morning, Nola brought Halsey over, saying it was cultural exchange day today at school. The perfect place and time to dump Cody. Too tired to start a fight with Nola. Ugh, I had to go along with it. At school, I stumbled upon Declan. He asked me to join him in the eating competition. It was kind of awkward after I ran away from him yesterday. But such an attractive offer. How could I say no? Man, I was born to do this. We were the last two standing in the competition, but Declan gave up and I won. I wasn't even thinking and I hugged him automatically. When I realized what I'd done, I let go of him, but my heart was racing. Could it have been the adrenaline of eating 12 huge burritos? After the competition, Declan and I were walking off all the food when we stumbled upon Cody. 12 extra extra large burritos in 15 minutes? You won this? Cody! No, this is his! What are you doing with him? Anyway, you're my girlfriend. You don't even know Riley for who she is. She's mine. Hold on now, guys. What on earth are you talking about? Don't listen to him. Let's go. You're not going with him. What do you mean? Stop! Let go of me! You're annoying me! This guy is so crazy! We gotta go! Now you're telling him I'm crazy? Cody, Riley is the girl you outed during the Bulldogs vs. Knights game. She's just trying to act girly and doing all this to get back at you. Cody was shocked and looked at me waiting. Uh, it's true, Cody. I started all this to get back at you. It just seemed so unfair. I'm just as good as any of the boys on the field. I worked my butt off for that game, and I scored the winning goal just to have it stripped away from me. Riley, actually, I was just so stressed that day, and the Knights were losing, but I didn't do it to discriminate against you in the game. I'm so sorry for doing it to you. I was taken aback by his apology. It was so sincere and honest. <laughs> it's a pity. What is? I actually fell so hard for this girly you. Aw, that's sweet, Cody. Tell you what, I'll make it up to you by bringing my real self to prom. And if you like this look right now, I know just who to introduce you to. <laughs> Deal. By the way, if I'd known sooner, I wouldn't have acted so poorly towards Declan. He seemed really hurt when he chose my side. I felt horrible about what I'd said to Declan. Even if he didn't agree with what I was doing, he was always there for me. But I acted like my best buddy in the world was a jerk in front of Cody. I was feeling all gloomy in my bedroom when Halsey showed up and asked to sleep over. Whatever, make yourself at home. Just leave me alone, okay? Actually, I can't. I saw the fight this afternoon between Declan and Cody. Gotta say, kinda admire Declan for speaking his heart. Unlike someone. What do you mean? Come on, you like Declan, don't you? Huh? N no, we're just homies. Oh yeah? So what you're feeling for Declan is also the same as the other homies of yours? What Halsey'd said made me think about recent moments I had with Declan. When he protected me from the basketball, when he held me at the carnival, and when I accidentally hugged him at the competition. My heart acted so weird. My feelings for Declan are definitely different from anyone else. Idiot, you do like him. But what you did this afternoon must have hurt him a lot. What should I do now? Why not ask him to the dance? That's right, I gotta redeem myself and make up with Declan. But I still couldn't face him and talk right now. So the next morning, I prepared a letter to send Declan. In the letter, I told him how I realized that I had feelings for him and that I wanted to take him to prom. Then Nola stormed into my room. Why didn't you dump the guy as planned? I explained to her that Cody's actually a confirmed good guy and insisted that she goes to prom. Plus, I had a big surprise for her. I also revealed that I have feelings for Declan and I'm going to send this letter to him. After I told her that, Nola's face perked up and she suggested that she help hand deliver the note just in case Declan was still mad at me. But days passed and I hadn't heard anything from Declan. I guess he was really mad at me and couldn't bring himself to reply to my letter. I really was horrible to him. Halsey came over, cheered me up, and suggested that we go to prom together instead. That really cheered me up and I agreed to go with her. She gave me another makeover, but this time it was more natural. I felt more myself. Halsey and I arrived at prom, and I was confused and disappointed to see Declan showing up with Nola? Neither of them told me they were going together. Right then, Cody appeared. Hey, Riley, you look great. The natural look really suits you. Thanks. Now, I have someone you should meet. Are you happy now, Riley? Being with your so-called enemy? Turns out I didn't know you at all. After I poured my heart out in that letter, he's still so mad at me that he'd attack me like this? I couldn't stand for it, so I fought back, and we broke out in an argument. Enough! What is wrong with you, Declan? You didn't reply to her letter and still have the audacity to be mad at her? What letter? Halsey and I turned towards Nola, and after a moment of nothing, Nola burst into tears. I hate you, Riley! 
You promised you'd help me get back at Cody. Then you abandoned me completely. So I didn't give the letter to Declan. Nola, I never abandoned you. When I realized that Cody was a good guy, I wanted to reintroduce you to him so you both could have a fresh start. So you were going to introduce me to Nola? You like her style, don't you? Yeah, but she thinks I'm a playboy. And she went as far as to create this whole revenge plot against me. This is all your fault for chasing after me and then dropping me for some other girl. Do you know how disheartening that is? I thought you didn't like me, so I moved on. Back then, I just tried to play hard to get. If only you tried a little harder, I'd have let you know. I didn't understand before, but I get it now. Can we start over? I'd like that. The DJ started to play a slow song, and Declan suddenly pulled me in to dance with him. So, that letter, what did it say? It said that I'm sorry for not realizing my feelings earlier. Then, I confessed my love to you and asked you to prom. Well then, here's my response. Riley, I liked you the minute I set my eyes on you. I wanted to do everything with you. I wanted to hang out, I wanted to play football with you, and I wanted to be by your side every moment of my waking hour. I could never figure out how you felt, so I hid my feelings for you. At that moment, Declan and I were the only two people in the world. We danced throughout the whole night, and I felt complete. And that's why you should just speak your heart, everyone. If you want to hear my story, comment Helzy's story, and I'll see you then. Okay, animators, you can continue. Finally, my first day at school has come. Yay! This special occasion called for my favorite hoodie. Super cool, right? <laughs> but then, out of nowhere, I was blocked by a group of boys and their cheesy pickup lines. No time for monkey business, but they wouldn't let me go. Hey, do you know who I am? I'm... Everything suddenly went blurry. Oh no, my glasses! I stumbled around trying to grab them back, but got shoved to the floor. Everyone scram. Give me that. I looked up and vaguely saw my hero offering me a hand. He gave me my glasses and I profusely thanked him. But he just gave me a cold look and walked off without saying a word. Strange. Oh, by the way, I'm Hazel Palmer, 17 years old. But I'm not here as a student, but a teacher. Yes, you heard it right. Not to brag, but I'm kind of a genius. <laughs> I even got offered a position in my college's research project, which I have rejected to pursue my dream of becoming a high school teacher. So here I am on my very first day of fulfilling it. First, I was introduced to the other teachers, but unlike what I had in mind, they just threw me judgy looks. Luckily, after the meeting, a young teacher named Rebecca kindly welcomed me and even tipped me off about some of the rebels at school. Now time to meet my students. As soon as I finished my introduction, the whole class immediately turned into a beehive. Miss, how about we continue this lesson at the movies tonight? Mullet, Paris knows. This guy must be the notorious Lucas that Rebecca warned me about. Please, as if you'd date someone who would wear such a goofy hoodie. Yeah, who let a weeaboo teach here? Jeez, I didn't expect this reaction. I tried to restore the silence, but to no avail. Ugh, I'm out of patience. Quiet, or else you'll all get Fs. Thank God it worked. Whew, that'll show them who's in charge. But here comes another problem. No way! There's gotta be someone who's really here to study, right? Okay, who is our class's top student? Ethan! Ethan. Ah, didn't he help me in the hallway? But it looked like he didn't recognize me. Okay, let's see. Ethan, right? Could you solve this equation? A equation? N no, equation. I suppose spelling is a bit hard for a numbers person like you. And the whole class burst into laughter. Jeez, this guy was unbelievable. Hmm, how about the second best student? Cassie Santago? That name sounded just like my old classmates. I turned to the corner where an arm reluctantly raised. Oh my, it's her! So good to see a familiar face here. But why is she avoiding me? That afternoon, while walking to my car, I saw Cassie and her friends picking on a girl. Upon seeing me, they immediately ran away, but I managed to catch Cassie. Cassie, since when did you become a mean girl? None of your business. Report me to the principal if you like. Then she strutted away, leaving me standing there confused. Since when had the sweet Cassie ended up on the dark side? Turned out, not long ago, Cassie's father passed away in an accident, leaving her to live with her stepmother. This must left her in so much grief that she put up this cold, reckless facade as a defense mechanism. That's so sad. So, to make Cassie feel included, and also to improve this whole class's performance, I came up with a master plan. More homework. Not finished? Minus points. And every lesson will come with a gift. 
a test during recess, and I asked Cassie and Ethan to help the other students. But when I called Cassie to the board, strangely, she couldn't do a simple equation. At first, I thought that it was just her being rebellious, but during the test that day, I noticed her copying Ethan's answers. Does that mean all her A's were from cheating? Not only that, the even shocker thing I found out was that Ethan was her stepbrother. After class, I came to talk to her, but she didn't pay me any attention. Cassie, I know the secret behind your A's. High scores mean nothing when they're not from your own hard work. But out of my business. <laughs> You're as much my friend as you are a proper teacher. I'd be pleased to tutor you. How about today? See you in the library after school. As if I care. Her words did hurt, but I guess she was just trying to keep her cold image. So I still waited for her, but she never showed up. No matter how much I tried, Cassie ignored me and kept cheating. During the midterm test, she even blatantly snatched Ethan's paper. It's true she's my friend, but I couldn't let it slide any longer, so I dismissed her test. That had to be done. <sighs> On the same day, while I was in the library searching for materials, I heard familiar voices talking. Ms. Palmer is way too much. She even dismissed Cassie's test today. Can you believe this? Why can't she be understanding like you? Cut her some slack, Sadie. She's just doing what she thinks is best. So that's what my students really thought of me? After everything I did to try and help them, yet all I got back was bad-mouthing? And Rebecca was so nice to defend me like that. No wonder they liked her. <sighs> a few days later, the unexpected happened. Cassie, Lucas, and a few others came and asked for extra lessons. Finally, they started to have another eye on studying. But little did I know that it's just a ruse for my dear students to turn the following days into a nightmare. And the instigator was Lucas, I supposed. One day, I almost fainted upon finding a huge ant nest inside my bag. The other day, my pants were stuck to the chair with some gum. <sighs> Fortunately, Ethan always showed up in time to help me. He's such a riddle. Unlike before, not only did he try to defend me in class, but he also helped me carry my textbooks. But I didn't expect him to care that much. One time, I saw him at the car wash where I worked part-time. I quickly hid behind a car, but Ethan just kept walking towards my wash box. I'm here to see you, so no need to hide. Let me give you a hand. After my shift, Ethan took me home. We talked a lot, and I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my mom's health condition and how I took this part-time job to cover her hospital fee. This side of him was far different from the normal, and it was heartwarming. Suddenly, we noticed an elderly lady who seemed lost, so we offered to take her home. And guess what? She's the grandma of the notorious Lucas. I was truly surprised by how much of a rebel like Lucas cared for his nana. I could tell he really loved her a lot. Poor boy. She's the only family he got now. Lucas, I know studying is not your thing, but have you thought about how happy your grandma would be if you at least tried? Since then, Lucas stopped causing me any mischief, and so did the other students. Now they could even do simple math themselves. Baby steps. <laughs> Seeing my effort finally bore fruit, I set up a parent meeting to report students' progress. Halfway through my presentation, a photo of me cosplaying as Sailor Moon popped up on the screen. Oh my god, why is it here? How dare you let this childish thing teach my kids? Then she stormed off, followed by everyone else. I thought I finally had my students on my side. Turns out I never did. Then came the last straw, my mom's medical test results. I couldn't help but cry, letting all my bottled up emotions out. Then, suddenly, a hand laid on my shoulder. What's wrong? My mom's health turned worse, and she needs an urgent operation. I'm sorry to hear that. It's all gonna be okay. Be strong, Miss Palmer. I appreciated him comforting me, and when I felt a bit better, we decided to leave. But the door was locked from the outside. It must have been a prank from my students. Again! We tried banging the door and screaming for help, but eventually gave up and waited for someone to come. This quiet atmosphere sure does have a way of making people open up, and I got to know about Ethan. Seemed like both of us have problems with our beloved family. What's yours? I... I have a sister. You know who. That I really adore. But no matter how hard I try, she always builds a wall between us. Oh, wasn't this the first time Ethan talked about his personal life? He always put on a cold and distant mask. But I knew deep down he had his struggles too. I was so absorbed in his story that I forgot about being locked up and gradually fell asleep. Until a buzzing sound startled me. And countless phone cameras were pointing at us. Guys, check your phones. 
Look what Miss Palmer and Ethan have been doing this whole time. Oh my! A bunch of photos of me and Ethan have been uploaded on the school website. And from some angles, it looked like we were... kissing! Oh no! I tried to explain, but they just threw me a disgusted look. And why was Ethan just standing here saying nothing? This soon reached the principal. He told me there would be a case hearing for inappropriate relationship with a student. How was this even possible? As I dragged my feet to the principal's office, suddenly I heard familiar voices shouting. Why did you do that? I told you to find her weakness, and look what you got. Nothing. I've done everything I could. What else do you want? Everything? Then why is she still here? As long as she's around, she messes up our cheating stuff, and mom will get my head chewed off for being useless at school. Or is that what you want, brother? What? So, Cassie had been pulling the strings this entire time? And Ethan was her puppet, befriending me just to please his sister. I knew she hated me, but did Ethan have to be so heartless too? Cassie then caught my eye, so I ran away. I was still trying to process this when I walked in to see the school council glaring at me. You're an insult to the teaching profession, which leaves us no choice. I was ready for the worst, when Ethan rushed in. Stop! It was me who deliberately jammed the classroom's lock to get back at her for being too strict, but I accidentally got stuck too. There's nothing going on between us. And so, I was cleared of all charges, and Ethan ended up in a week-long suspension. Why did he do that after all? After such a long trial, I drove around town to blow off some steam, then saw Cassie fighting with a security guard. I found out that Cassie stole a bracelet and was refusing to call her parents. The guard said he'd have to call the cops, so I came forward as her teacher to bail her out. Cassie asked me why I helped her, but I didn't bother explaining myself and just left. Since that day, Cassie didn't attend the extra classes. After his suspension, Ethan returned with his offhand attitude. <sighs> no time to worry about those two. My mission now was to prepare my students for the upcoming finals and regain my prestige. Luckily, they started to take studying seriously and invested a lot in these tests. One day, when I walked into class, some students even asked me to help solve advanced exercises. Two weeks later, when the results came, my excited students all rushed over to me. Miss Palmer, thanks to you, the questions were the same as the ones you showed us the other day, so it only took us a blink to finish. What are they talking about? Before I could understand, the principal summoned me to his office. As I entered, he angrily showed me the math sheet that I was allegedly teaching in the extra class. What kind of work ethic allows leaking exam questions, Miss Palmer? Leak the test? Me? No! Please! No more excuses. You're fired. No, no! They can't punish me for something I didn't do. Someone must have framed me. I asked my students where they got that piece of paper and they said it was already on the table when they came to class. So Cassie and Ethan must have been behind this. Good job, Ethan, for putting up their remorse act just to set up a bigger plan to humiliate me. Okay then, they won. Unemployed and desperate, with hospital bills to cover, I had to work full time at the car wash, as well as taking night shifts at 7-Eleven. But besides the measly wages was a bonus of rotten eggs and tomatoes, scornful looks and snarky comments saying I didn't deserve the teacher title. <sighs> the scandal truly turned my life upside down. Then, when I was at the hospital with my mom, suddenly Ethan rushed in and said he would clear my name. Clear my name? Wasn't he the one who put dirt on me? What was he playing this time? With nothing to lose, I reluctantly went with him. He led me to the school's control room. The principal was also there. Then I saw Sadie standing on stage. Ethan said it was her who discreetly put the math sheet on the table. What? But, Rebecca? I distributed the test like you said, but I'm scared. What if someone finds out? Don't worry, now that Miss Palmer's fired, who else can dig this up? I'm only taking back my position as the beloved teacher who can take cover for y'all. No, I have to tell the principal everything. Who would believe you? I would. Furious, I rushed over to the stage and confronted her. Rebecca, I thought you were my friend. How could you? Don't ask me. Ask your phony self. Weren't you just trying to get the students to like you? What nonsense was she saying? I'm just doing my part of being a good teacher. How could she be so selfish and cruel? Out of jealousy? Miss Palmer earned her students' respect with her pure heart. Look at you. The so-called love you have comes from buttering them up with all your lies. That's why they turn stubborn and make light of studying. 
I never knew you were that kind of person. How could you call yourself a teacher? The principal couldn't hide his rage, fired Rebecca, then apologized to me and offered me my job back. But after all these troubles, this school had completely drained me. I couldn't take it anymore, so I refused. As I was wiping away my tears, Ethan came to my side. Miss Palmer, I'm sorry for everything I did. I just tried to please Cassie, but now I know I was only hurting you. I've already known about that. I was about to leave when a group of students led by Cassie approached us. Then Ethan told me it was Cassie who helped him with the plan to bait Rebecca into admitting her actions. Sorry for all the horrible things I did to you. Please stay. We've learned a lot since you moved here. Please don't leave us. Such a crazy term. I ended up staying. I mean, this is my dream job after all, and I'm not one to give up that easily. I also talked to Cassie's stepmom about her studying. Turns out she didn't realize her strict approach was causing a rift between them all. Cassie, Ethan, and their mom had a talk, and now they seem to understand each other better. I was so happy for them, and we became friends after that. Time flies, and now my students, or my friends, to be correct, graduated, and would soon fly off to pursue their own dreams. Suddenly, Ethan dragged me to a corner. So from now on, we're no longer teacher and student, right? I guess, but so... But could you still... Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm here to tell you how my not-so-small problem changed the course of my life. When it comes to butts, well, there are lots of names for them, such as tush, behind, backside, bottom, and so on. Trust me, I've heard them all, countless times. You see, I have a big butt. In proportion to the rest of me then, well, it's undeniably massive. My mom and dad both have pretty big butts, so combine both of their genes together, and you end up with me. Ever since I was a little kid, strangers passed comments on the size of my butt. I remember being in a grocery store once, innocently looking in the candy aisle, when a woman came up to my mom and said, Your baby, is she alright? Because her backside seems to be very big. Yeah, seriously, some people were that rude. And the older I got, and the bigger my butt grew, then the worse their comments became. Teenage me? Well, I had a hard time. At the time when I hit puberty, my butt became even more enormous than boys didn't look at my face anymore. Instead, they only seemed to notice my butt. One boy was staring at it so hard that he walked straight into his locker and gave himself a concussion. Then there were the seats at school. I mean, why did they have to be so tiny? I'd rather stand up than try to fit in them. But no choice for me, I had to literally squeeze myself onto it, then do a wiggle routine to get out of it, and in fact, whenever I tried to sit down, someone always pointed and laughed at me. Talk about awkward. This popular girl called Mary always went out of her way to tease me. One day, I was wandering down the hallways when Mary stuck her foot out and tripped me over, and then said, No one likes you, tushy face. I looked up at her, and that's when I realized I'd had enough. I must do something to stop this. As she triumphantly walked past me, my anger flared up. And for a moment, I lost control. I rushed in and pushed her. The next moment, she fell down the stairs and lay there unconscious. I stood stunned watching her. I hadn't noticed that we were standing near the stairs. Seeing that, her group of mean girls rushed in and started to hit me. I just couldn't do anything but lay on the ground and keep my head. Then, a voice piped up at the back of the crowd. Leave her alone. It isn't her fault that she has a big bum. It was this girl called Anita. After that, we started hanging out more, both in school and out of it. Having Anita by my side made me feel stronger, and the mean comments about my butt size didn't bother me so much anymore. My life at school got a bit better. Then one day, this rich kid at school was holding a huge senior party at his family mansion. For the first time in a long time, I felt confident enough to go. I arrived at the party wearing my cutest dress. I saw Mary with her large gang of wannabes, but I knew there'd be lots of trouble if she saw me, so I chose to avoid her. Then I spotted Thomas, the most handsome, sweetest guy I knew. I'd pretty much had a crush on him since preschool, but I'd always been too self-conscious to tell him about it. Go and talk to him. Anita gave me a gentle nudge forward. Go on, before Mary gets to him first. My nerves took over, so I said to her, but what if he isn't interested? She rolled her eyes at me. 
Not gonna happen. Now go. He seemed happy to see me, and we both hung out and drank a lot. Then we snuck off upstairs to the master room. We sat on the bed, and he looked at me, like, really looked at me, then said, I really like you, Sarah, and I think you're the most beautiful girl in school. I blushed. This was the sweetest thing a boy had ever said to me. Then he leaned in and kissed me. OMG, talk about amazing. We were passionately kissing when the door burst open and someone shouted, Why are you with her? It was a furious looking Mary. She continued yelling at us both and even tried to hit me. But Thomas protected me. Then he took my hand and led me out of the room. Mary continued to shout mean comments at me, but I didn't care. Thomas liked me, and she just needed to deal with it. A week later, Thomas asked me out, and I said yes. Being his girlfriend was the best thing ever, as he made me feel so special. Suddenly, having a big butt didn't seem to matter. In fact, Thomas said it only added to my beauty. Then one day at school, I was sitting in class when an announcement came over the speaker. Sarah Montgomery? Please report to the principal's office right away. The principal said that Mary's parents had reported the fight between me and Mary, and I was the one who started it first. So I was expelled. I was so mad that I didn't even bother clearing up my locker. Instead, I just stormed out of there. I ended up at a different school, and I tried my best to focus on my studies. I wanted to go to college and study drama, as I loved acting, and believed my unique body shape would be a big selling point in the industry. Thomas and I continued to date. He always supported me and made me feel like I was capable of doing anything. I didn't see much of Anita anymore, but we kept in touch. One day, I was studying in a cafe when a man came over to me, passed me his business card, and told me that with a butt like mine, I could make serious money modeling. So that's how I became a photo model. Turns out the man hadn't been lying about the money. Okay, so I wasn't an actress yet, but I earned loads. Finally, the part of my body I was so ashamed of made me super successful. I paid off all my college fees and gave my parents back all the money I'd loaned off them. A few months later, I was on a date with Thomas, and in the middle of dinner, he bent on one knee and pulled out a ring and said, Sarah, will you marry me and make me the happiest man alive? Overcome with joy, I shouted out, Yes, 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 I will marry you. Finally, the day of our wedding arrived and I was so excited. After everything I'd been through, I was finally going to marry my charming prince. I had the most amazing fairy tale dress and the perfect castle venue. Better still, Anita was there as my maid of honor. As I was dancing, I saw Jack, who was my drop-dead gorgeous cousin, and he just came to join my wedding party. Anita had always been looking to meet him. I was so excited and decided that tonight was the perfect time for Anita to get access to him. I went looking for her, but she wasn't on the dance floor or by the bar, so I searched upstairs. I was about to open one of the doors when I heard a male voice coming from within. I'll try and get some money off her. Just give me a few weeks, okay? Then I heard a girl's voice say, But honey, we need the money now, and I don't like Sarah. She's more butt than person. Then the guy said, You know I don't love her. I only love you. I looked through the crack in the door and saw the two of them kissing. Then I registered who they both were. It was Thomas and Anita. My new husband was kissing my best friend on our wedding day. Angrily, I ran into the room and threw my shoe at Thomas's head. Unfortunately, he ducked in time. Seeing me, Anita was extremely terrified and immediately ran out of the room, leaving just me and Thomas there. I shouted at him, You're a jerk! Anything to say, huh? Thomas looked at me in panic and confessed to me all. So Thomas told me how he'd liked me back in school, but over time, his feelings for me changed, and he found himself falling for Anita. He was going to break up with me, but then I ended up being successful. Seeing as he'd been the one supporting me, he thought it was only fair that he got a share of my money. So him and Anita constructed this whole wedding plan to take half of my money. I was so shocked. I had to sit on the ground. My heart felt like it was shattering in my chest. Then I opened my mouth 
and screamed at the top of my voice. I ran out of that place crying, and the wedding was canceled. I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard. Being betrayed by the man I loved and my best friend was painful. I shed a lot of tears over them, but I refused to shed any more. Turns out, Thomas wasn't the man for me, but I believe that my perfect man is out there somewhere. My backside may be exceptionally large, but I'm still a real person with real feelings. I only wish the world was more understanding, but for now, I'm using my butt to progress in my career, and I have a feeling I'm gonna be just fine. Always be you, and never let anyone take away your shine. If you try so hard to fit in and be normal, then you'll never find out how truly amazing you are and how you were born to stand out. It took a lot of effort, but I finally got into the military school that I've always dreamed of. I'm now one step closer to being an actual soldier. Ah! <laughs> hey, midget. Move it. You're blocking my way. What? How dare he? This rude guy deserved a lesson. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my fist. I looked up. Oh, it was some tough-looking guy with tanned skin and bright eyes. He picked up my backpack and said, First, you have to know your enemy. He's Eric. Before I could reply to this boy, he walked off. At that moment, the siren sounded, and I quickly got in line. Choose your groups, you have one minute. Looking around, I saw two guys looking as awkward as I did. So I shuffled over to them, and we became a group. Oh, but wait, why did that guy who picked up my backpack team up with that obnoxious jerk Eric? It turned out our groups would be our roommates, and we were placed in room P02, which was right opposite Eric's room. My roomies are Tom, who was forced here due to his family's military background, and Henry, a notorious playboy who was sent here by his father to stop his opulent ways and learn how to lead a disciplined life. What about me? Well, I'm a girl. My disguise is awesome, right? You see, I have a twin brother, Jack, so I took his identity, and voila, here I am. Ever since I was a little kid, I've loved martial arts and always dreamed of one day becoming a soldier. I thought life here would be great, but it certainly had its challenges. Every morning, whatever the weather, we have to wake up at 5 a.m. and run around the yard. The showers were ice cold, and worse still, because I'm a girl, I had to sneak into the freezing shower block in the dead of night when no one was around, and physical education here is surely rough. Although I train a lot, I'm still always ranked at the bottom. I also struggle to finish the massive meal portions here. Not only do we have to work out loads, but our chores are also endless. Cooking, gardening, ironing, helping out with constructions. I was a novice at these things, so I was super clumsy and messed them up. Luckily, I always had Tom and Henry on my side. Tom is a nerd, and although he doesn't like studying here, his grades are top of the class and he gives me the answers to the questions I don't know. As for Henry, he gets top grades in PE class. And even though he teases me a lot, he's the one who protects me from Eric. Speaking of Eric, he's a jerk who teases weaker students in school. But he gets away with it for one simple reason. His dad's in charge. And as for that boy that warned me on my first day, yeah, turns out he's called Ellis. I can't quite work him out, even though he often hangs out with Eric and participates in his meaningless dumb pranks. One time, after Eric knocked a younger kid over, I saw Ellis go back and check he was okay. Hmm. Friend or foe? Who knows? Today we have Taekwondo class. Perfect. I quickly challenged a smug-looking Eric. Too bad he doesn't know I have a black belt. Ha! <laughs> and as I predicted, I kicked his butt in just three moves. K.O. I walked over to my two fellows with a big triumphant smile on my face when Henry suddenly rushed forward and pushed Eric down. Turns out, he was sneaking up on me from behind. Nice try, coward. But sorry, dude. We three always have each other's back. We were laughing about Eric's defeat when the lunch bell went. But 
Oh no, the room was locked from the outside. Eric has to be behind this. No worries, the food here sucks anyway, Tom said while pulling a bunch of food out from under his bed. <laughs> Again, Tom? You've already been punished twice this week for sneaking food in here. Suddenly there were noises outside. I went closer to the door to listen when it burst open and in stepped an officer. I stepped into the corridor to see everybody was gathered around whispering, while Eric was on the ground, looking pale like he'd just seen a ghost. Oh my god. The door of room P01, Eric's room, had weird scratches all over it. It looks like those scratches spell out a word. Jacob. So there's a monster named Jacob. Well, that's comforting. P02! You all missed lunch, so I want five laps around the yard. And also five points are deducted for bringing in outside food. Ugh! Points deducted again? At this rate, we'd never gain access to the entertainment room. Oh, here we keep scores between rooms. Just like in Harry Potter with the house's points. It's quite a competition. At the end of the week, the room with the highest score gets access to the entertainment room. You know... Watching TV or using social media are considered a huge reward in the strict school, but it's hard to earn points. Meanwhile, you can get them deducted for any reason. For me taking a shower at the wrong time, to Henry skipping theory lessons, and now Tom and his snacks. Ugh! What does Jacob mean? Anyway, seeing Eric freak out like that was hilarious. Jacob is a name. Don't you see that, Jack? He's Eric's ex-roommate. I heard that he's missing. Hey, Tom, is there anything you don't know? Hmm, I see. But why did that missing Jacob scare Eric so much? We're never going to get into the entertainment room. It's all work, work, work in this place. Who cares about that stupid room? This weekend, there's a prom at the local girls' school. I have a step-by-step -step plan for us. We'll sneak into the school milk delivery truck to get there. Then I can finally talk to some lovely girls instead of those aunties in the kitchen. That sounds good. Hey, maybe you'll even find your first love there. Right, Jack? Huh, they had no idea. Anyway, the thought of getting out of school for a bit was appealing. That weekend, Henry stole some of the gardener's casual clothes, and then we hid in the milk delivery truck to attend the prom. As soon as we got there, Henry had already got himself all smitten with a cute blonde while Tom spent all his time debating World War II with a girl majoring in world history. As for me, I really enjoyed all those tasty cupcakes. But why wouldn't the girls quit pestering me? I guess it proves that I look quite manly, right? We gotta go. The bus to our school is about to come. Change to your uniform. You have one minute. I quickly got changed, then ran after them so fast, I bumped into someone, and we both fell to the ground. I was in such a rush that I could only say sorry, pick up my dog tag, and run out into the road to catch the bus back to school. Where did you guys just get back from? They just helped clean up the cafeteria, sir. I just got back from there. Hearing this, the officer stopped questioning us. But, huh? Why did Ellis help us? Isn't he meant to be on Eric's side? While indulging in thoughts about it, I took out the dog tag from my pocket and was about to put it around my neck. But wait, it's not mine. Look, guys, this dog tag has the name Jacob on it. I quickly showed them the dog tag and explained the incident to them. I must have picked up that guy's tag by mistake. Could it belong to the missing Jacob? Or was it merely coincidence? I mean, Jacob's a popular name, right? The next day, as we were helping to distribute food in the kitchen, there were noises coming from the dining area. As soon as I went out, I saw Eric sitting on the floor, shivering in fear. Next to him was his bowl of soup splattered everywhere. At first, I thought he was playing some tricks to get us to clean up. But no, looking at the way he ran out of the cafeteria in panic, something must have happened. I bent down to pick up the bowl. Oh my god. And it was a dog tag with Jacob's name on it. But the dog tag I took by mistake yesterday is still in my pocket. Hmm, what's going on? Eric was so preoccupied with the Jacob stuff, he didn't have time to taunt us, so our room got the highest score for the first time, which means we would finally get to experience the entertainment room. But as soon as we reached the lobby of the utility area, 
something didn't feel right. A bunch of kids were buzzing in front of the entertainment room where the hazy smoke was coming from. Thinking there was a fire, we rushed to put it out. But no, it was only a smoke bomb. Inside the entertainment room, Eric and his friends were fainting. People splashed water on his face, but as soon as he woke up and saw the words Jacob burned black on the wall, he blacked out again. Huh? Who did this? Was it Jacob? Was he not missing after all? Today we have P.E., but I'm on my period, so I made up an excuse to go to the school's infirmary instead. On the way, I happened to see Eric with his group of friends. I think Jacob's spirit is back to take revenge on me. You know that time? I locked him in the old warehouse and he just disappeared without a trace since then. Is it possible that he was- Stop talking nonsense. Maybe someone who knows what happened in the past wants to mess with you. I even took his clothes away. Oh god, he would surely want to haunt me. Oh my gosh, it all made sense now. Suddenly a large hand muffled me, then dragged me away. You better shut your mouth and keep this a secret. It was Ellis, Eric's sidekick. What a faithful servant. What if I don't? Especially since I met Jacob. What did you just say? You don't believe it? Here. I bumped into someone, and he dropped this dog tag. As for the one in Eric's soup bowl, I think it's just a fake. Ellis trembled as he took the tag from my hand and quickly left. Was he going to snitch on Eric or something? That night, while I was having dinner, Eric was back to jerk mode again, and he dumped his leftovers on my tray. The two sides clashed, and we all ended up with an hour's detention. The punishment sucked. They locked each of us in a tiny room containing one chair and left us to think about our wrongdoings for a whole hour. The next morning, the officer knocking on the door woke us up. Eric was missing, and we were the number one suspects. This was ridiculous. What did his disappearance have to do with us? I told Henry and Tom about the other day when I overheard Eric and his friends. So Eric teased Jacob... So now he'd returned for vengeance? Feeling suspicious, we snuck into the school's abandoned warehouse. Yep, there was Eric all tied up and with a rag in his mouth. It's Jacob. His spirit has returned. He wants to harm me. Help me! Huh, look at that arrogant Eric being all scaredy cat. Call me Captain. Uh, no. Call me Farther. Then I'll let you go. Tom and Henry burst out laughing, but Eric just stammered and then everything started to go blurry. Then I must have blacked out. When the three of us groggily came round, we saw that the only thing left there of Eric's was his uniform. As soon as we got back to school, we heard from the others about how Eric had appeared in just his tidy whitey. Everyone gloated to see the overbearing Eric lose his face. From now on, he wouldn't dare tease anyone again. But this was the exact same way Eric used to pick on Jacob. So, Jacob did this? Was he back? Actually, I already knew who was behind all this. You dropped this at the warehouse, right? Ellis looked at me surprised and asked how I knew. We actually snuck into the main office to find information about Jacob before we got to the warehouse. And as soon as I saw his picture... I knew right away there was some sort of close connection between Ellis and Jacob. Call it twin senses. It turns out that Jacob was Ellis's brother. During his time at this school, Eric made his life a misery. But everything was kept a secret because Eric's the principal's son. So, Ellis enrolled at this school to get answers. Ellis took the dog tag back and handed over a picture of me with my twin brother. And this must be yours. I picked it up on the first day of school when you dropped your backpack. You remember? Oh my god. Was this for real? I snatched the photo and quickly put it away when I saw an officer approaching. We should get to know each other better, right? Since we both know each other's secrets. Whatever. Anyway, I don't hate Ellis. And Eric deserved it, so it didn't matter who did that. I turned my head to look at Ellis. He smiled as if he was challenging me. Uh Uh-oh. I had a feeling my life here was about to take a turbulent turn. 
Have any of you ever worn braces before? If you have, I feel for you. I really hope your experience was better than mine. I thought braces would make my life so much better, but oh boy, was I wrong. It all started because of how ugly my teeth were. They were short and had such big gaps between them. My friends sometimes made jokes about them, and it really hurt my feelings, but I tried to hide how I felt and laugh along with them. Because my parents worked away all the time, I lived with my grandparents in New Jersey, and they never thought there was any problem with my teeth. They said they'd grow as I got older, but honestly, I couldn't handle the teasing anymore. Eventually, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Every time my parents sent me pocket money, I'd save every cent. By my senior year of middle school, I'd finally saved up enough money, and so I went to the dentist and asked him for braces. My dentist said I need to wear them for about two years, and I thought that wouldn't be such a big deal, right? I mean, a few of my friends had braces too, and they still looked pretty. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. My teeth were so messed up that normal braces just wouldn't cut it. My one friend had recently got these invisible braces, so I asked my dentist if I could get the same ones. But he said I needed something more hardcore. I ended up with black iron braces, and they made me look even uglier than before. How stupid I'd been to think that braces would magically make my teeth better. My friends thought it was hilarious and said I looked like I had train tracks inside my mouth. Everyone was laughing at me, and slowly, I started to distance myself from them. Those days were some of the worst of my life, and all I wanted was to run away where no one would know me. So after I graduated from middle school, I persuaded my parents to let me go live with them in New York. I figured that I could start again with a clean slate at my new school. But seeing as I still had two years to go with the braces, I needed to make a plan. I didn't want to be the kid everyone laughed at anymore, so I decided to fake being mute so that I could hide my braces. On the first day at my new school, I'd prepared a letter that said I was mute due to oral surgery affecting my larynx, and that I was in the recovery phase, but it could take years to heal. I even faked my parents' signatures. Luckily for me, they were too busy to take me to school on my first day, so everything was going to plan. I thought someone might be at least a little suspicious, but no one asked me about it. And even the teachers gave me sympathy and said everything would be okay, and I'd still do well in my classes. I couldn't believe it. I knew I had to be careful though. So I separated myself from the other kids so they wouldn't try and talk to me. I didn't even eat lunch in the cafeteria because I was too afraid people would see how embarrassing I looked when I ate. I seriously had to open my mouth wide and chew super carefully. And afterwards, there was always chunks of food stuck in my braces. But ugly teeth aside, I actually wasn't bad looking. In fact, thanks to the braces, I'd lost 10 kilograms. So my body was looking quite good. If I didn't open my mouth, I was kind of pretty. And because I kept myself separate from everyone, there was an air of mystery about me. After a week or so, a few guys started approaching me, trying to flirt with me, but I just ignored them. I knew if I opened my mouth, it would be game over. I could see they thought I was a bit of a diva, but it was better than revealing my ugly secret. There was one guy called Jake that I secretly liked though, and I knew he liked me too, as he always tried to speak to me. But of course, I ignored him, and it made me feel so bad. Anytime he came up to me, I'd pretend to be busy or act like he was invisible. I wish I could just be honest with him, but then he wouldn't be into me. I mean, what guy wanted to date a girl with braces like mine? And as for the girls, they didn't like me one bit. One time, a girl in my class called Angela tried to ask me a question, and I just walked away from her. She shouted after me, asking me why I was being so rude and said that no one had ever ignored her before. She was the most popular girl at school, and ever since that day, she started to treat me so badly. I heard her whispering to her friends that I should be at a school for disabled kids, and then one day she even came and told me that to my face. I was so upset. This school was just as bad as my old one. I didn't understand how people could be so mean. But that was nothing. It was about to get worse. One day, I woke up with a cold. I couldn't stop coughing and sneezing, but there was no way I could miss school as we had an exam that day. I decided to wear a face mask so no one would see my braces if I had to cough or sneeze. When I finished the exam, I was at my locker and suddenly the biggest sneeze came. I ended up sneezing five times in a row and afterwards I said, Jesus, out loud as a reflex. Then I panicked. I was supposed to be mute and I just spoken. What if someone heard me? Well, someone did. I turned around and Angela was standing there with her friends. They were looking at me in shock and Angela said, I thought you couldn't speak, hmm?
Then she walked towards me and reached out to pull my mask off. Suddenly, Jake appeared and stopped her. He told her to back off, and then he stood there protecting me. No one had done something so nice for me in years. That's when Jake and I started hanging out. We would go to the library for walks in the forest and even play piano together. I used a small notebook to write down whatever I wanted to say to him. And of course, I just smiled, never laughed when I was with him. But then one day he leaned in to kiss me and the worst thing ever happened. The thought of his lips touching the metal braces in my mouth made me disgusted with myself. So when his lips touched mine, I got such a fright, I basically had butted him. And when I realized what a stupid thing I was doing, blood was pouring out of his nose. Both of us frantically tried to stop the bleeding. I felt so ashamed of what I'd done that I had to try so hard not to cry in front of him. And he also blushed shyly. After that, it was hard to fully relax with him. Even though I liked him so much, I was so afraid that he'd catch a glimpse of my monster teeth and then break up with me. Little did I know what was just around the corner. One morning I was walking to my locker when I realized everyone was staring at me. I felt so self-conscious and didn't understand why they were all looking at me. And then I saw it. Plastered across my locker were tons of photos of me. And they were all of me from middle school. From when I hadn't worn braces to when I had it full of my mouth. They were the worst photos ever. I was ugly and fat in them and I couldn't believe someone could be so cruel. As I stood there in shock, Angela walked up to me and said, You're a liar. A monster pretending to be a mute little princess. Well, the truth is out now. Then she turned to everyone watching us and told them I really could speak. Turns out her cousin was in my old middle school. They'd been hanging out and she told Angela that I wasn't mute and hadn't had any surgery and that I just had ugly teeth. When she triumphantly walked past me, my anger flared up and for a moment I lost control. I rushed in and pushed her down the hallway. Then I jumped in to sit on her back and started pulling her hair and then I saw blood and that's the moment when I realized I'd taken it too far. Her front teeth had broken when she'd fallen. Everyone was taking photos. I was sitting on Angela's back holding her hair and my mouth was wide open revealing hideous braces. Jake was also present in the crowd and looked at me in awe. I don't know if it was me or Angela who was more humiliating in this situation. After that, Angela had to wear big black iron braces just like me. The dentist said there were problems with her root canal, so she couldn't have implants. The only solution was wearing braces and hoping that her other teeth would move and fill the gaps. And my parents had to come to the school and apologize. And of course, I was suspended for what I did, not just for pushing Angela, but also the fact I forged my parents' signature. Jake never spoke to me again, which broke my heart. But what hurt even more was what happened a few weeks later. I found out Jake and Angela started dating. I couldn't believe it. I knew Angela was only doing it to get back at me, but it made me wonder, did that mean Jake didn't find girls with braces ugly? Why did I hide mine then? And there's one thing I still want to know. How do they kiss when Angela has a mouthful of braces?